Hey guys, welcome back to Pop'em Up Cam. Today, we're looking at electro potential and how that's linked to Gibbs Free Energy. So we've seen Gibbs Free Energy pop up in Unit 5, Unit 7, and now is popping up its head again. And these are all linked. So let's get on with it. Today, we're going to be looking at stating the equation for free energy using E cell values, calculating some of those values and applying that to understand spontaneity of reactions in this context. As usual, we've got a refresh question to get started on. So pause the video here and give yourself a moment. So all you're doing here is using your E-cell values to check the feasibility by flipping the relative equation and seeing if you've got a positive E-cell. So when we do that with lead and calcium, we get a positive value. We don't get a positive value with zinc and iron, and we do get a positive value with Cl ions and fluorine. So the answer is of course, C, one and three. So turning our attention to Gibbs. Now we've used other equations to determine Gibbs free energy uh, previously, but now we're gonna be using this equation for delta G, is equal to minus NFE. So where N is the number of moles of electrons transferred in the reaction, so you need your half equations to work that out. And F is the Faraday constant, which is the number of coulombs per mole, and that is 96,500. That's also given in table one of the data booklet, if you forget. And you can see at the bottom here, I've shown you that if we have moles and we have coulombs per mole and we have volts that these cancel out to give us coulombs times volts which for those of you who don't know equals joules and joules is the units of energy that we previously used for delta g so we can summarize the relationship then between delta g and e cell linking unit 15 to this unit. So we know that we have a spontaneous reaction when delta G is negative and E cell is always going to have the opposite reaction. Now remember, if E cell is zero, then delta G is zero and that's the equilibrium point. The reaction has already happened effectively. But we can link E cell to delta G and that's a powerful tool. So this shows us that the more positive an E cell value, the more feasible the reaction is, the more energetically favorable it is. And it also allows us to use a voltmeter as an indirect measure of Gibbs free energy. So this is a powerful tool because now we can use a voltmeter to measure something that can be, in other cases, quite difficult to measure, as well as also the voltmeter still, of course, measures the potential difference. So a question, might look something like this. We have a reaction and we wanna calculate the free energy. Well, using the equation that we just looked at, we know that we're gonna need Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs per mole. And then using that equation, delta G equals negative NF plus E. The only thing that we have left is the number of moles. Now we can see in this equation, that we have two moles of electrons being transferred. You could write out the half equations if you couldn't see that straight from the equation above. And then you just plug in the values that the question's given you for the E cell value, which gives us negative 310730 joules, which is 310.73 kilojoules. So you could, of course, be asked to also calculate the E cell of the equation first of the reaction before you do this part, but I just wanted to focus on the Gibbs calculation here. Okay, so let's get you doing a question on that. So first question is doing similar calculation, calculating the free energy of this lithium and silver reaction. Pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So using the same equation as before then, we can see that we only have one mole of electrons being transferred here. 
multiplied by Faraday's constant, which is always the same, multiplied by the E cell. So for this one, we get negative 370.560 joules, which is, is of course 370.56 kilojoules. Okay, for the next question, I want you to calculate the free energy of this reaction, but you're not given the E cell value directly. Pause the video here to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So remembering what we've already done on this, you need to calculate your E cell value first. And of course, make sure you reverse your oxidation half cell. So that's the most negative. So in this case, we're going to get 0 0.34 plus 0 0.45 equals 0 0.79 volts and then once you have that you can just plug those values into your equation for delta g using two moles of electrons which is the number transferred in the equation times the e cell value which is minus 152470 joules just to make sure you get enough practice for that then here is a few questions for you to have a go at so if you just pause it here and get some good practice in. Okay, so we can go through the answers here. Hopefully for the first part, you should have just written out your equation, which is delta G minus NF plus E, where you've got number of moles, Faraday's constant, and of course the E cell value. Now, you know that the link between these two is they are inverse when delta G is negative, E cell is positive, etc. So we're going to write out the reaction for the second one. So we've got Mg plus Fe3 plus. That's our redox reaction. And we want to make sure that it's fully balanced. You could have used the full half equation method to do this as well. Then we're going to calculate the E cell value and the value of delta G. So E cell value, we're going to use our E cell equation, which is going to be 0 0.32 plus 2.37, which is 2. 0.69. Now we're transferring six electrons in this equation, so that is going to give us an answer of negative 1557510 joules. So this last one kind of encompasses most of what we've been doing. So we want to calculate the E cell value first. So aluminium ends up as our most negative. So of course we're gonna flip that. So that's gonna give us plus 1.66 for aluminium. Now for iron, you have to be careful when it's Fe3 plus because you don't get the value for that. So we're gonna to have to combine both the Fe2 plus going to Fe and the Fe3 plus going to Fe2 plus. Once we add those two together, we get 0.32. And then we combine that to give us our 0 0.98 volt E cell value. And then we can just use that value to plug into the equation. We've got three moles of electrons being transferred and therefore um, we get a total using Faraday's constant of negative 283710 joules. Now remember, it wants you to comment on the reaction feasibility and you know that a negative value for delta G is going to be a spontaneous reaction. Okay, guys, so make sure you do a lot of questions on this, but it shouldn't be too difficult. We're just plugging in the values. Really, we're building on the knowledge that we got from previously studying Gibbs free energy. So you might want to go back and have a look at that if you're finding it a little bit difficult. You just really want to remember that relationship between Gibbs and E cell values. There are some limitations to this data because it's all collected at STP. So where we see deviations of that, we can see deviations from these values. Um, there are ways we can look at that using the Nernst equation. That's in option C. Thanks for joining me again, guys. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share the video and check out our other channels. And remember, practice makes slightly better. <laughs>